Skins 5 Eyewitness News this morning starts now. And good morning. It's Friday, March 7th. I'm Matt Garcia. And I'm Natalie Tejeda. You're waking up to Ken's 5 Eyewitness News at 4.30 here this morning's top headlines. Right now, the famous victory or death letter is about to leave the Alamo City, but not before generating some excitement and bringing in some The United cash. States is fully capable of defending against uh, any North Korean ballistic missile attack. You heard it. The White House responds to threats of a nuclear attack. This on the heels of even more warnings from the communist country. And all the cardinals have now arrived in Rome. Now it's a waiting game to determine who will be the next pope. We'll have a report from the Vatican. All right, let's take a look at your weather. But uh, couldn't help but notice a lot of cloud cover this morning. Yeah, I noticed a few sprinkles on my windshield as well. Paul, are we expecting, I think you'd mentioned earlier in the week, maybe some rainfall this weekend. Well, new this morning, a gas spill from an 18-wheeler has shut down a section of eastbound I-10 near Bernie Stage Road overnight. Now, according to police, a white sedan hit a guardrail, sending a chunk of it flying into the roadway. An 18-wheeler behind the car then ran over the piece of metal, puncturing a gas tank and tire. Neither of the drivers were injured, and crews just finished up cleaning the roadway, and I-10 has has now been reopened. Well, he was supposed to be helping an elderly widow pay her bills. Now this morning, a 67-year-old man is behind bars, accused of stealing $200,000 from that woman. Police say Stephen Lawson knew the 88-year-old victim well and was given access to her bank account to help the woman with her finances. Detectives say over the summer, Lawson withdrew over $200,000 in cash from her account without her permission and didn't intend to use it for her needs. He now is facing several charges. Point out the elderly facet of those offenses because what that does is it enhances those offenses. All of the three offenses are felonies that he's facing. Police say bank employees became suspicious and then notified the woman of the activity on her account. Lawson was arrested at his home in Universal yesterday without incident. Well, if a Texas lawmaker has his way, the Alamo could be restored to its original look and even be expanded. Recently, State Representative Mike Villarreal filed a bill to make the area around the Alamo a historical district. However, the expansion would eliminate some nearby businesses and could cost around $100 million according to Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf, The bill is now headed to the Recreation and Tourism Committee. Well, the White House is responding to a North Korean threat promising a preemptive attack on the United States. Yeah, during a massive rally in the country's capital, North Korean leaders responded to new U.N. sanctions by cutting even more ties. And meanwhile, a member of Osama bin Laden's inner circle is scheduled to be in federal court today. Suleiman Abu Ghaith, who officials say was bin Laden's son-in-law, was captured in Jordan just this past week. He faces charges of conspiring to kill Americans in his role as al-Qaeda's top propagandist. 439 right now. When you think movie-making city, Hollywood, right? Well, turns out the best city for creating classics just up the road. That's right. It's a big honor for the Austin film scene. Heather Kavar has the story showcasing some of the highlights of the upcoming South by Southwest Film Festival. And Austin's South by Southwest Festival officially kicks off today. And that's when thousands of people from all over the world will converge on downtown Austin over the next 10 days to experience the latest in technology, film, music, and, of course, fashion. It all starts with the festival's interactive portion, which features some wearable technology and, of course, all the latest in social media. Well, imagine flying across the globe in just three hours. Well, you can catch a flight like that right down the road in Houston. The city of Houston, synonymous with space travel. So why not build a spaceport there? City officials say they've already applied for the license. If approved, spacecraft would take off from Ellington Field and then soar to the edge of space, nearly 100,000 feet above the Earth. Officials say the edge of space travel would make long trips significantly shorter. Skimming along the top of the world, connecting Houston with places as far and remote as Singapore in under three hours. But if you think a quick, quick hop to Vegas or New York is pricey, this hop across the globe wouldn't be cheap either. Tickets would cost around $200,000 a piece. And that's not for you know destination travel. We're just talking about space tourism. So I don't know, you guys. Would you shell out $200,000 to see the edge of the world? Um, if I had, if, if, I had about, <laughs> if, I had about, if I had about 20 million bucks, maybe. Yeah. But, 
and I don't see that happening anytime mm -hmm. soon. So. Small customer base. Small, yeah. small, small customer, customer base, customer. right? Very yeah. small. But, yeah. you know, I tell you, in the future, if you got a real powerful deal in Singapore, mm -hmm. it might be worth a couple of hundred grand, I guess. But, damn. I don't know. It's, it's like when you go into, like, you know, those those websites, you're looking for the cheapest flight. I'm trying to find a, a good price deal. I'm like, yeah, $200,000. Cheapest flight. Oh. hundred ninety nine grand. I don't think you could, I don't think you could <laughs> put a sale on that one. Right. Yeah, I don't think so either. Thank you, Paul. Well, the last cardinal who could help choose a new pope has arrived in Rome. Yeah, some believe today may be the day. Cardinal set a date for the election. CBS Randall Pinkston reports from Vatican City. This next story is pretty amazing, but you may want to turn away because the video can be a little graphic. A girl born with a part of her heart outside of her body. Now, four and a half months later, she's out of the hospital and doing well. Adrina Cardenas, again, born with a part of a third of her heart beating outside of her body. A day after her birth, a children's surgeon rebuilt her chest to put her heart inside her body. She's now home, but has to stay near the hospital because she still needs oxygen and a feeding tube. She has a feeding tube and a breathing tube right now, and it, it doesn't even matter. It's, it's all worth it. She is a smiley, happy, go lucky baby. And just beautiful to boot. Audrina has no sternum to protect her heart, so they built her a little pink shield. And if you look closely, you can still see her little heart beating beneath her skin. What a miracle. Yeah, nice they did it in pink. Well, 455 and 61 degrees, flowers, cake, white gown, and tux. Some kindergarten students in Kansas were dressed to impress for a wedding like no other. <laughs> Well, talk about a creative teacher. What started as a classroom lesson about the alphabet ended like this. A wedding uniting a special pair of letters that always go together. Q and U. After the ceremony, the class held a reception complete with cake, a toast, and even a little dancing. The teacher says she had no trouble finding uh, anyone to play the bride, but the groom, on the other hand, was a little bit harder to come by. But in the end, Mr. and Mrs. Q and U. Ah. They were a pair. What a cute way to, to match that up. Very cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could see how a groom was hard to come by because <laughs> at that age, I wasn't even thinking about something like that. Girls had cooties, right? <laughs> cooties with the letter Q or is it K? Something like that. I, I don't know. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for a 430. We'll be right back. Ken's 5, All I Witness News this morning starts now. Happening right now, Travis's victory or death letter leaving the Alamo within minutes. A live look at its heavy patrol as it head back to Austin. The United States is fully capable of defending against uh, any North Korean ballistic missile attack. And tension is high between the U.S. and North Korea as both sides make bold claims. And the 26th annual South by Southwest kicks off today in Austin. A lot of good times there. Yeah. Good morning on this Friday, March 8th. I'm Matt Garcia. And I'm Natalie Tejeda. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Those are our top stories. But first, I have to mention the weather. I felt a few drizzle drops on my windshield and, and on, my, on my nose as I was walking into the <laughs> station this morning. Paul, what is in store for us this weekend? Natalie. What's going on at 502 this morning? You know, we're really fortunate that the roadway is looking pretty good for us. Taking a real quick check, though, always starting off with just a real quick check over at 90 eastbound, just outside 1604. Just a little bit of a slowdown, but once you get on to 1604, close to Petrenko, West Military speeds there, nice for you. Upper 40s, lower 50s this morning. Taking the quick check outside in those Transguide cameras, a quick check over at 35 and Evans. Only a couple of cars out there, not nearly as heavily uh, congested as what we'll see closer towards that 6.30, 7 o'clock time frame. And a real quick look over at 1604, looking nice for us this morning. Matt. Well, the famed Travis letter has finished its showing at the Alamo. That's right. Now this piece of Texas and American history will be heading back to Austin. Our Marvin Hurst is live at the Alamo with the latest. Good morning, Marvin. All right, now one Texas lawmaker wants to restore the Alamo footprint back to its historic size. The only problem, it would cost tens of millions of dollars. State Rep Well, the bill now heads to the Recreation and Tourism Committee. In international news, North Korea has canceled its peace treaty with South Korea, and it also killed a hotline connecting the two countries. The move comes after the U.N. Security Council approved new sanctions against the communist country over its third nuclear test. North Korea had threatened a preemptive nuclear strike on the U.S. if it followed through with U.N. sanctions, which target the country's econo economy and leadership. Meanwhile, the White House says it's not faced by North Korea's threats. 
the United States is fully capable of defending against uh, any North Korean ballistic missile attack. North Korea held a mass rally in response to the U.N. sanctions. The country is conducting a series of military drills which correspond to joint U.S. and South Korean military exercises that are expected to be in full swing by Monday. And the brother of the woman who was attacked and killed by a lion tells of a loving relationship between his sister and 350-pound cat. And good Friday morning. Congratulations, everybody. We made it to the end of the week. Sometimes it feels like we're never going to make it to Friday, but uh, we did. So let's take a look at your morning drive. Looking pretty good for us. Not yet dealing with any accidents, but taking a look up here over the northwest side. We're close to Camp Bullis, Lock and Terra Parkway. If you're getting ready to head uh, eastbound this morning, you're going to see speeds in the upper 60s, low 70s for us this morning. And then a little bit closer towards the downtown area, seeing a little bit of a slowdown. We're close to 10 and 90, but really closer towards that 1035 interchange. It's going to be an easy drive for you close to Calabria Hildebrand speeds there, upper 50s, low 60s this morning. Currently, your travel time from Bernie Stage Road down to 410. That'll only run you about an 11 minute drive. A little bit less than normal, actually, which is nice. A real quick check outside over at 10 and Callahan. Looking nice for us. Only a couple of cars out there. And in just a few minutes, we're going to be taking a look and talking about 281. But right now, looking nice and quiet for us. Send over to Paul, though, with a look at our forecast. Because, Paul, I did feel a few drizzle drops out there this morning on my drive in. So just curious if we're expecting any moisture in the air today. Okay, guys, time to honor all the women in your life. Maybe pony up for a cup of coffee because today is International Women's Day. It's a time to honor the achievements of all women past and present. The annual holiday celebrates women's political, economic, and social accomplishments. Organizers say thousands of events will be held throughout the world for today's holiday. There are approximately 7 billion people in the world, and about half of them are women and girls. Luminaria, the celebration of light, is on this Saturday night. The sixth annual Festival of Lights showcases the artists from all over the world. Luminaria will be held downtown in Hemisphere Park Saturday night from 7 p.m. until midnight. The event is free and open to the public, and over 300,000 people are expected to attend. Well, it's always a big celebration over there, mm -hmm. Natalie. Now, you know, last year, I don't know if you remember, but last year it was rained out. Yeah. And they had to postpone it and this and that. This year, you know, we hadn't had a drop of rain in a couple of weeks, and Saturday there is a threat for rain, but, but I really believe, I really believe that most of the rain is going to wait till after the Luminaria. I was curious about that. So go out there Saturday night, should have a good time, but overnight Saturday night into Sunday morning will be wet. I, I, they were on Great Day SA recently, and yes. I saw that they had some cool stuff, so expect some cool stuff out there uh, this I, Saturday. I'm not kidding you. They blew my mind with what they had. Mm -hmm. They had this 3D thing. Uh -huh. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It was just a trippy. Yeah. Very trippy. So go out there Saturday night, have a good time. All right. All right, let's talk about what's going on out there on the roadways. Really, we're really fortunate we're not dealing with any accidents just yet out there. So things looking pretty good for us. Taking a look up here on the north side. If you're headed northbound on 281, we're close to Evans Marshall Road. You're going to see speeds there, upper 40s, upper 50s for us this morning. Southbound looking also nice and clear for us. We're close to Stone Oak Parkway, Evans Road as well, in about the 60 mile per hour range for us this morning. Currently, your travel time from Stone Oak Parkway into the downtown area is going to run you about a 16 minute drive for us this morning. If we look outside in a few of our trans guide cameras this morning, 281 over at Grayson looking pretty nice for us, real close to the downtown area. And then a real quick check right in that downtown area over the 37 and 35 interchange, not yet getting busy as well. So, so far, so good out there, Matt. Take a look at this church. <laughs> what does it look like to you? The steeple that's gaining national attention. News on the move is next. And welcome back. Well, the way a church is built has some crying foul. <laughs> Plus, a kindergartners, well, they have a wedding right down to the letter. Marvin has it in News on the Move. Eric, you like that uh, steeple, the chicken steeple. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Exactly. All right, a few of our Facebook fans celebrating birthdays today. Manuel is 72. Juan is 43. All right, and Mariah is turning eight years old today. Isn't she cute with a pretty flower in her hair? And one of our Who's own Ken's Five producers, <laughs> Ralph Garcia. Happy birthday to you, Ralph. He, there he is with Pigman. And there he is on the float. Last year's Fiesta. He was a Fiesta King. Oh, well, nice. Happy birthday to you, Ralph. One of our favorite guys around here. Okay, he's a producer on Great Day SA, and I'm like, he's a talented individual. That's right. Hard worker. Yeah. And you can make your loved one feel special on their birthday. Just email their name, their picture. I always say age is optional. I understand women when they don't want to give their age, but what, why does Ralph not want to give his age? I don't uh, know. He just, he just kind of rolls like that. <laughs> That's just how Ralph but rolls. I, but I can give it away if you'd like. What is it? Uh-oh. It's more than 30. Less, Less than, than 40. 35. <laughs>
Happy birthday, Ralph. <laughs> we'll be Stay right with. back. <laughs> Ken's 5 All Eyewitness News this morning starts now. Two motorcycle casualties within hours of each other. How the accidents happen, we're going to have a live report. And Osama bin Laden's son-in-law is accused of targeting American citizens. He'll face a judge for the first time today. First 3D glasses and then 3D printing. Now you'll be able to jot down notes or draw in a picture in 3D. Well, wow. That's pretty cool. That is pretty interesting. Good Friday morning to you. It's March 8th. I'm Natalie Tejeda. Mm, yeah, 3D image when you actually draw something. Yeah, nice. that's pretty neat. I'm Matt Garcia, also dealing with uh, some clouds out there, possibly maybe some drizzle. Good morning, yeah. Paul. All right, Natalie, how is traffic going to treat us today? You know, we're really fortunate we're not dealing with any accidents just yet, but if we take a look up over kind of on the northeast side, real close to the New Braunfels area, if you're headed uh, northbound on uh, 35, real close to Walnut and Seguin, speeds currently in the upper 50s, low 60s this morning. Southbound, also nice for us, real close to 46 in McQueenie. Also mid-60s this morning as well. In a little bit closer towards that 35-1604 interchange. If you look outside on those trans guide cameras for us, 35 at Evans. Starting to pick up and see a few more cars out there on the roadways, but still relatively light traffic flow-wise. And then a little bit closer towards the, the downtown area, just a little bit north of the downtown area. Also nice and light. Two people killed in two separate motorcycle accidents. Now, one happened downtown overnight, the other on the city's north side. Our Marvin Hurst is live with the latest. Good morning, Marvin. Thank you so much, Marvin. Well, an Amber Alert remains in effect this morning for two missing children. Take a look at them. They were last seen in Kennard, Texas, which is west of Lufkin. Authorities believe one-year-old Jordan and two-year-old Nivea Simpson Simpson may be in grave or immediate danger. Bonnie Benton Miller is suspected of kidnapping them. They may be traveling in a 2005 Silver Honda Accord, which is similar to the one on your screen. It may have the Texas license plate number CYX069. If you see them or have any information, you're asked to call police. Well, Osama bin Laden's son-in-law will appear in a federal court in Manhattan today. Suleiman Abu Ghaith was captured overseas last week and secretly whisked to the U.S. to stand trial for allegedly conspiring to kill American citizens. Suleiman appeared beside bin Laden in this video released the day after 9-11. Warning more, warning more Americans would die. Republican critics say Suleiman should have been sent to Guantanamo Bay as an enemy combatant and not to New York, where he will be tried in a civilian court. I think when it comes to future captures, the Obama policy of not using Gitmo when it comes to enemy combatants is going to deny us valuable intelligence and uh, make us less safe. Abu Ghaith is expected to face a number of terrorism-related charges, possibly included murder, and that could mean the death penalty. Well, 537, 61 degrees. Some high-profile guests are paying their respects to the late Hugo Chavez as his body is on display before his funeral. You like that, Natalie? I think it looks pretty cool out there, so I think it'd be a lot of fun to kind of make stuff, and definitely for kids, and let their imaginations go wild. Okay, let's talk about what's going on out there on the roadway. It's starting to get a little bit busier for you for your Friday morning commute. Congratulations, everybody, on making it to Friday. Looking at the Ken's 5 Instant Traffic Map, dealing with one new accident. This one is over at uh, 410 in Starcrest, just uh, a little bit as you're making your way on 410, over towards that 35 interchange. Just a minor accident. She didn't slow you up too much this morning, but if we take a look outside in a few of our TransGuide cameras, especially over on 410, real close to Jackson Keller, looking pretty good for us on this particular stretch in between uh, I-10 and 281 this morning. But where we are starting to see things pick up pretty considerably, though, is over at 410 and Ingram, starting to see a few more cars, especially on the eastbound side. So I'm planning for just a few extra minutes this morning. Send over to Paula because I think you've got some rain planned for our weekend. Well, 546, 61 degrees, scam artists are now targeting your cell phone. They're sending tens of millions of texts designed to get your personal information. Jenny Sunica joins us live in the studio with more on the scam. And Jenny, what do people need to know? Oh, well, it looks like things are relatively calm for us. We are dealing with that one minor accident over at 410 and Starcrest. But other than that, we're looking pretty good for us. Even that little pocket of congestion that we were dealing with outside of 1604 and 90 East Sound looks like it's kind of easing up for us. So once you get on to 1604, we're close to Petrenko, West Military. 
military, looking good for us, upper 40s and low 50s. And then over in between 151 and Bandera, Brook of Shane, Philip Bowens crossing New Gilbo. Speeds there, lower 50s and mid 40s as well. Currently, your travel time from Shanefield Road over to 10 in 1604. That's going to run you about an eight minute drive. If we look outside on those trans guide cameras for us this morning, 1604 tradesmen looking pretty good for us this morning. But again, the Amber Alert is still in effect for those two missing children uh, this morning, real close to Lufkin. And then taking a quick check over at 10 and Callahan, looking pretty nice for us as well this morning. Matt. Well, despite a 12 hour filibuster by Kentucky Senator Rand Paul, John Brennan will take over as the new head of the CIA. Just last night, the Senate approved Brennan's nomination less than 24 hours after Paul's filibuster. Paul had wanted to limit the U.S.'s ability to use drone strikes on American citizens. Yesterday, the Obama administration relented. Attorney General Eric Holder sent Paul a letter placing specific limits on the president's authority to authorize such attacks. The move was enough to clear the way for Brennan's Senate approval. The space shuttle program is long gone, but Houston isn't planning on losing its Space City title. Yeah, we're going to tell you about new plans that could take you to the edge of space. 556 right now, the city of Houston is synonymous with space travel, so why not bring a spaceport there, right? That's right. The city officials say they've already applied for the license to do so. If approved, spacecraft would take off from Ellington Field and fly right on the edge of space, nearly 100,000 feet above the Earth. Officials say edge of space travel would make long trips significantly shorter. Skimming along the top of the world connecting Houston with places as far and remote as Singapore in under three hours. But a flight that short would not be cheap. Tickets would cost you about $200,000 a piece. But that's not for destination travel. That's for space tourism. I don't know. That's still a pricey ticket. I think of every time I go on like southwest.com to book a flight to go see my family. And I go, I'm looking for a $200 flight, not, <laughs> not a $200,000. $200, <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you, if I mean, if you could afford it and do that, that would be very cool. I, if I could afford it, I would absolutely love to go to the the end of the <laughs> the space, to the edge of space. All right, 557. We're going to be right back.